Welcome to our ninth class in Taima Dvorah, that classic work, the palm tree of Dvorah, composed by the 16th century great Kabbalist and mystic from Tzvaz the Ramak, Rabbi Moshe Kor de Vero. He passed away in 1570. We have been studying this work over the last few weeks. The series is dedicated in the merit of Binyamin Yisrael Chaim ben Chanita for a complete and speedy recovery, as well as in the merit of Yechiel Shalom Mardechai ben Malka Nechamahena and David Chaim ben Tzipora. May they all have a complete and speedy recovery and many, many long, happy and healthy, prosperous years. In this work, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero is teaching us how a human being ought to mirror and reflect in his or her life, daily encounters and behaviors, the 13 attributes of divine compassion, because a person essentially is a mirror of Hashem on earth. We are a manifestation of divine infinity, divine light, and divine love. Previously, we discussed the first five attributes of divine compassion and how they could be mirrored in a person's daily life. They are intimated. All of the 13 are intimated in that verse in Micah, chapter 7, Micha Perik Zion. Mikael Kamaicha is number one. Who is a God like you? Noise Aven, who bears iniquity, Vaever Al Pesha, who cleanses transgression. Lishairis Nachalase, for those who are internally connected to him. Lehechzik Ad Apay, number five. He does not hold on forever to anger. Now we come to the sixth attribute, ki chafetz chesed hu, which means he is the one who desires kindness. Says the Ramak, let's look inside, havav. The sixth attribute is ki chafetz chesed hu, he is the one who desires kindness. If you want to follow inside, please open up the book Taim Advaira. You can also find it on theyeshiva.net, T-H-E-Y-E-S-H-I-V-A, theyeshiva.net. And if you go to Taim Advaira, this is number nine, class number nine. You can put in the search Taim Advaira and you will have the source sheets above the video. You can see view source sheets and they will open up on the screen or below the video, there's download. You can download the source sheets on your computer as a file. You can also print them out, of course. Says the Ramakalik Vapri Rashnu Bim Kame, we already explained elsewhere. Sheyesh Bahechel, Sheyesh Hechel, there is a known metaphysical chamber, as it were, where there are appointed angels to receive every act of generosity and kindness that a person does in this world. There is no act of affection and generosity that ever goes unnoticed and does not, that does not have an eternal impact. Every action, Every word, every thought of love, of generosity, of chesed, of affection, of kindness, the kindness we bestow upon each other, every such act and word and thought gets absorbed, it gets recorded. There are special angels who absorb it all. And when the attribute of sternness, of judgment, prosecutes the Jewish people, immediately, those angels show they display that kindness. And God has mercy on the Jewish people because he is in love with kindness. This is the sixth attribute. God desires kindness. He's in love with kindness. And therefore, when Hashem sees that we are kind to each other, that we help each other, that we're graceful to each other, that we love each other, we show kindness and chesed and benevolence to each other, Everything changes. Even if they're guilty, even if you're talking about people who are liable, they may have done seriously inappropriate things. If they are kind to each other, if they do favors to each other, if they show, if they are generous to each other, he has compassion for them. We have an illustration for this. During the era of the destruction of the first Beis Amikdash, First temple was destroyed in the year 3338 since creation, the Jewish calendar, 3338 since creation through the Babylonian emperor. And one of the prophets who lived during that turbulent and difficult era was Yechezkel Hanavi, Ezekiel the prophet, and his prophecies were recorded in the Sefer Yechezkel. The first chapters there are very mystical. He has a lot of mystical visions, and here is one of those mystical visions that the Ramak is going to share with us. Now, there's going to be a lot of terms here that are extremely cryptic and mystical because they are allegorical. They're written in code language, and they really uh, 
are referring to transcendental ideas. And he gives us here a very interesting and unique original interpretation because many of the commentators of Tanakh give different interpretations. What happens? There's a vision in Yechezkel chapter 10. Shenemel Gavriel. The angel Gavriel is told, Boy Elbinois la Galgal. Come inside the wheel. Galgal is the wheel. I want you to come inside the wheel work. What is this talking about? Explains the Ramaki who Saradin Vagvura. Gavriel represents the spiritual angel, the minister of judgment and strength and discipline. The Nasan Lairishus, God has given him permission, authority, Lekabel Koichis Adin, to receive the powers of judgment. Binois Legalgal, which he would find inside the spiritual wheel. It's also known as the Aifanim, a certain form of angels called Aifanim, which means wheels. Mitachas Lekruvim, which would be under the cherubs. Me'esh Hamizbeach. He would find those powers of judgment in the fire of the altar as it were in the base there was an altar and on it there was a fire fire unlike water represents gvur it represents toughness and and strength and discipline and judgment this is the judgment that comes from the strength of malchus of kingship which demands responsibility and loyalty and the attribute of judgment was becoming intensified until it sought to destroy everything. To eliminate the seed of Israel. Because they were liable of elimination. They were liable to be eliminated. And suddenly in that chapter, there is a vision. Suddenly, something appeared. And by the cherubs there appeared the form of the hand of a human being under their wings. What does this mean? Says Reb Moshe Kardavir, Gavriel. God tells Gavriel, Yes, I know there's a fire. I know there's an attribute of judgment. I know there's an attribute of discipline and strength. I know you're dealing here with a people who has become morally impoverished and corrupt as the prophets who prophesied during the end of the sec of the first temple era discuss the downfall, the moral and spiritual and emotional downfall and society downfall of the Jewish people during that era. But God now tells Gavriel, I get it, but heim goimlem chasadim eluim elu. Suddenly, under these cherubs, where there's a fire burning, we see the image of the hand of a person, an arm that's stretched out to share kindness with another person to show generosity, benevolence. They're generous with each other. And therefore, even if they're liable, they were saved. And they survived. They endured. Why? This is the sixth attribute. God loves kindness. He cannot turn his eye away from chesed. He cannot divert his attention when he sees chesed. He just has this tremendous vulnerability, if you were, if you want, well, this tremendous desire and affection for when a Jew does chesed to somebody else, when we're kind to each other. And it's that aspect that he's going to recall, that he's going to bring to the fore, even though from another side, from another angle, they're not kosher. You could choose a different perspective. I could look and say, look, this is not kosher. This is not kosher. This is not good. This is not good. But God decides to recall, to bring to the fore the fact. Look at what this person does for another person. This is Hashem's attribute. Now we can mirror this in our own lives. In Cain, says the Ramag, this is the way in which a person should behave. Even if I saw that a person did something wrong to me, and he made me angry, he made me upset. If there is in him another side of goodness, he does favors to people. Or another positive attribute, sure, he does behave appropriately. This angle, this perspective should be sufficient to nullify my anger towards him. My heart should find a favorable spot for him. And I should desire his kindness. And I should be able to say, 
It's enough for me when I see this great goodness that he has. What often happens in life is it's so easy to demonize a person. He may have done something wrong. He may have said something inappropriate or stupid or foolish or insensitive. And he did get me upset. And we have to work it out. And we're not trying to whitewash everything and say he didn't do anything wrong. But the Ramak says, don't demonize him and turn them in, turn him or her into this evil character. See the totality of the person. There's also a lot of goodness in this person. Can I tune into that? Can I look at that? Can I recall it? Can I focus on that? Can I accentuate it? Can I glorify that? He says, that's what you should be doing. The kosher can be ishtoy. Here he gives us marriage advice, especially when it comes to your spouse. People so often, because there's such an intense and close relationship between a husband and a wife, so this is what we do, husbands to wives and wives to husbands. You know, my husband did something wrong and my wife did something wrong. And suddenly that becomes the whole story. That becomes the whole focus. There's nothing else. <laughs> because my husband did this or my wife did this or said this, this becomes the story of this person. You are a terrible, terrible person who is making my life miserable. Really, says the Ramak? Can you also open your mind? And even if you're hurt, can you also look at all of the goodness can you also see all of the kindness? Can you also see all of the midas and all of the positive values over the years? There's nothing else that exists. And he's going to give a powerful example from a story in Gemara. Can the Pirshu Rabbi Seno Zechel of Rocha, a rabbi spoke about this in Talmud Yuvamas Daf Samach Gimel Amad Aleph, Tractate Yuvamas 63a. Let me tell you the story there. One of the greatest Talmudic sages was Reb Chia. Reb Chia had a difficult marriage. His wife was very, very, very unkind towards him. The Gemara doesn't tell us why, but she behaved in a very, very harsh way with him. It was not easy for him. And yet the Gemara says, Reb Chia's relationship towards his wife was always loving and graceful and kind. In fact, whenever he would find anything that he thought would please her, he would make sure to purchase it and get it wrapped up beautifully and present it to her as a gift. And once he was approached by his nephew, one of the greatest Talmudic sages, Rav, and as the Gemara says over there in the same page, also, he had a very difficult marriage. In fact, the Gemara says whatever Rav would ask his wife to do for him, she would do it, but she would do the exact opposite. So Rav turns to his uncle, Reb Chia, and he's like, uncle, how do you do this? You're so nice to her, you're so kind to her, you're always buying extra gifts for her. That's like a husband who's, who has an amazing, brilliant relationship with her. How do you do this? And Reb Chia told him these words, Dayenu. It's enough. These women, my wife, your wife, they raise our children. And they save us from promiscuity, from sin. This is what Reb Chia was saying. Now this is, in many ways, it's a sad story because it was a, it, because <laughs> he was really trying and she really behaved in a very negative way towards him. And yet Reb Chia said, She's raising my children. I'm not going to take that for granted. That's incredible. That trumps everything else. This is the woman who's raising my kids. He was one of the great sages of the generation. She was raising the Kedalach. More, she saves me every day from possible male promiscuity and inappropriate intimacy. Rashi says, Hirur Havera, thoughts that are toxic, that are inappropriate. She saves me from all these thoughts because she's my wife. That's what I choose to look at. Wow. That's why I buy her a gift every time I can. Kach, Yoimra, I'll call Adam. This is something, this is an attitude you should cultivate, certainly to your spouse, even if there's things that need fixing. Now, he's not saying we shouldn't fix the things that need fixing. He's not saying we shouldn't talk about, you know, comments or actions that hurt us and we should try to repair them. But what he's saying is never fall into that trap of you're completely bad, you're completely evil, this is horrible, there's nothing good that ever happened here. Really. <laughs> Perspective. Context. See the totality of a person. <laughs> this should be an approach that we cultivate towards every person. To say, it's enough when I see the tremendous favor that he did for me. Did he do other things that I was upset about? Maybe. But look at this favor that he did for me. Don't legitim do delegitimize it. Don't forget it. Don't throw it under the bus. Maybe not with me. Look at what he did for another person. Look at that. 
Focus on that. Recall it. Bring it to the fore of your consciousness. Or look at another amazing positive attribute that he has. Is he perfect? No, he's not perfect, but look at this. The bottom line is, mirror God, who is Chafetz Chesed, who cherishes so much kindness, and when he sees it, he will never, ever ignore it, even if there are other things he can focus on. Have a wonderful day. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.